Summary of Middlemarch by George Eliot Dorothea Brooke is a young woman who comes from what one could call a good family. She possesses a high level of intelligence and a strong religious faith. She and her sister Celia are orphans and live in Tipton Grange with their uncle Mr. Brooke, who has never been married. Sir James Chetam wants to date Dorothea, so he brings Rev. Edward Kasabin, a 45-year-old bachelor and religious scholar, to dinner at Tipton. Kasabin has spent many years on The Key to All Mythologies, a complex book about the history of religion. Dorothea has been working hard on plans for houses for the farm workers who rent land in Tipton. She likes Kasabin at dinner because she thinks he looks like John Locke and must be a great man. She imagines a life in which he will ask her to marry him and she can reach her intellectual goals by helping him finish the key to all mythologies. Sir James is excited about Dorothea's plans for the houses coming to life, but Kasabin doesn't seem to care about them. Mr. Brooke tells Dorothea that Kasabin wants to get married. Soon after, Kasabin sends Dorothea a stiff, awkward letter in which he proposes to her. Dorothea is so happy that she starts crying and falls down. Mr. Brooke and their family friend Mrs. Cadwallader are both unsure about Dorothea taking Kasabin, but they finally give in and say that Dorothea can do what she wants. Sir James is also shocked and horrified by what Dorothea has done, but more because he cares about her than because he feels sorry for himself. He and Dorothea are still friends, and he still goes to Tipton often. Dorothea, Celia, Mr. Brooke, Kasabin, and Kasabin's second cousin Will Ladislaw, who is carrying a sketchbook, meet Dorothea, Celia, Mr. Brooke, and Kasabin at Kasabin's house, Lowick Manor, before they get married. Later, just before the wedding, there is a dinner party at Tipton. Tertius Lydgate, a young, eager doctor who just moved to Middlemarch and hopes to bring cutting-edge medical change to the area, is one of the people who will be there. Rosamond Vincy, who is known to be the most beautiful young woman in Middlemarch, has a hold on Lydgate. Rosamond's brother Fred is lazy, careless, and full of himself. Fred thinks that his uncle, Mr. Featherstone, who is sick and hated by most people but very rich, will leave him his land. Fred has been borrowing money because he knew this would happen. Fred has loved Mary Garth since they were both young children. Rosamond, on the other hand, is set on marrying Lydgate because she thinks that will help her become richer and more important. Bulstrode is a rich banker who is treated with suspicion because he is a visitor from an unknown place and because he is an evangelical. He is paying for the new hospital and he wants Lydgate to be in charge. Fred got a loan from Mr. Bambridge, a local horse dealer, to gamble with. When he couldn't pay it back, Caleb Garth co-signed for him. When Lydgate was living in Paris, he fell in love with an actor named Lore who killed her husband on stage. After what happened, Lydgate decided to treat women in a scientific way from then on. He likes Rosamond a lot, but he doesn't want to get married for another five years because he needs to focus on his work first. Lydgate becomes friends with a priest called Fairbrother, and Lydgate isn't sure if he should vote for Mr. Tyke to be the new hospital's new chaplain. But in the end, Lydgate gives in to Bulstrode's pressure and gives Tyke the vote that makes the difference. Will Ladislaw and his friend, the German painter Adolf Naumann, see Dorothea at the Vatican. Dorothea is not having a good time on her vacation. She is upset by the way Kasabin treats her, especially the fact that he won't let her help him with his academic work. Kasabin is working at the Vatican Library when Will comes to visit Dorothea at her flat. When Kasabin finds out, he wants to stop Dorothea from seeing Will alone, but he doesn't. The next day, Nauman asks both Dorothea and Kasabin to sit for him, and they say yes. Will goes back to see Dorothea by herself and tells her that the key to all mythologies will fail because Kasabin can't read German and isn't up to date on the latest religious research. Fred is still worried about his debt, and then he fails a test at school, which makes him feel even worse. He tries to make money by selling a horse, but the horse gets hurt and Fred ends up in a worse situation than when he started. He tells Caleb, who looks sad, that he doesn't have the money. Caleb and Mrs. Garth understand that they will have to give up their funds, which they had planned to use to pay for their son Alfred's apprenticeship. 
Also, they will have to ask Mary for some of the money she has saved. Fred gets a fever. Mr. Wrench, the Vinci's doctor, takes care of him, but Fred's state only gets worse. When Lydgate walks by, Rosamond calls him in. Lydgate notices that Wrench gave Fred the wrong medicine and says that Fred has typhoid fever. Mrs. Vinci is happy to tell everyone that Lydgate saved Fred's life. Dorothea hears that Celia and Sir James are getting married when she gets back from her honeymoon. Kasabin is sick, and when Lydgate checks on him, he says that Kasabin has a heart problem that could kill him if he doesn't stop working so much. Mrs. Bolstrode hears that Lydgate and Rosamond are engaged, and when she asks Lydgate about it, he says he won't go to the Vinci's house again unless it's for work. Rosamond is sad. When Lydgate sees how sad she is, he learns that he loves her and asks her to marry him. As Mr. Featherstone's death gets closer, his family members crowd around his house to make sure they get their share of his estate. He is angry and tells them that he has already made his will. Mary is taking care of him. One night, he wakes up in the middle of the night and asks her to burn one of his two wills. She says no, even though she knows that will make people doubt her. He tries to buy her off with 200 pounds, but she won't give in. Featherstone dies soon after that. When Mr. Featherstone's will is read, everyone in Middlemarch finds out that all of his money and land will go to Joshua Rigg, who is not his real son. No one in Middlemarch has ever seen Joshua Rigg before. The family members are very angry, but the Vincys are especially upset. Mr. Vincy tries to get out of the marriage between Rosamond and Lydgate because Lydgate doesn't have enough money. As the idea of changing the way elections work gets steam, England's politics are in a mess. Mr. Brooke buys the Pioneer, a local radical newspaper, and puts Will Ladislaw in charge of it. Kasabin tries to stop this from happening because he doesn't trust Will's feelings for Dorothea. But Will goes against him and takes the job. Brooke, on the other hand, is called a phony because he is running for office on a progressive platform, but he is known to be a mean employer. Caleb is hired by Mr. Brooke to run Sir James's property Freshet in Tipton, which keeps the Garths from going bankrupt. Fred is back from college, where he finally passed his final test and got his degree. He doesn't want to go into the church, though. John Raffles, Joshua Riggs' stepfather, comes to Middlemarch to ask Rigg for money. Rigg doesn't like him very much because Raffles is a drunkard and used to beat him. Lydgate, who just got back from his vacation, talks to Dorothea about medical change. She agrees to give £200 a year to the new hospital. Even though he has been successful, most people in Middlemarch still don't like Lydgate. Will and Lydgate become friends, and Will often visits Rosamond and Lydgate at their home. Kasabin's health keeps getting worse, so he asks Dorothea to promise that she will do something he wants after he goes. Dorothea hesitates because she thinks he's going to ask her to finish the key to all mythologies. She says she'll give him an answer in the morning. She decides to say yes, but when she goes to tell Kasabin, she finds him dead. Mr. Brooke and Sir James find out that Kasabin's will says that Dorothea will lose all of her land if she marries Ladislaw. Celia tells Dorothea this, which shocks her. For the first time, she thinks about the idea that she might have feelings for Will. As part of his bid for office, Mr. Brooke gives a speech and gets hit with eggs. Fred asks Fairbrother to help him find out if Mary would be okay with him becoming a priest. Mary tells Fairbrother that she will never marry Fred if he joins the church. Raffles goes back to Middlemarch and starts to bother Bulstrode this time. It becomes clear that Raffles knows things about Bulstrode's past that he wants to use to blackmail him, and that these things have something to do with Will. Dorothea has been living in Freshet with Celia and her new baby since Kasabin's death, but she is getting bored. Will goes to see her and tells her that he is going to leave Middlemarch. Caleb and his helper Tom are measuring land in order to build a railroad. A group of farm workers who don't want the railroad attack them as they work. Fred helps Caleb and Tom defend themselves, and Caleb offers Fred a job as a sort of trainee. This makes Mr. Vincy sad because it means that Fred's schooling was a waste of money. 
Rosamond loses her baby after Lydgate told her not to go horseback riding. She and Lydgate have a lot of debt, which forces Lydgate to sell their jewelry, which Rosamond finds very upsetting. Will finds out from Rosamond that Kasabins will says he can't get married to Dorothea. Bolstrode is still upset by Raffles' appearance. When Bolstrode was young, he became friends with Mr. Dunkirk, a guy from his church who ran a pawn shop. Bolstrode was the business's manager. The business bought and sold stolen items. Mr. Dunkirk died, and Bolstrode married Mr. Dunkirk's wife. The widow wanted to find her daughter Sarah, who had moved away and was now Will's mother, so she could give Sarah her inheritance. Bolstrode paid Raffles to say they couldn't find Sarah so that Bolstrode could get the money. Back in the present, Bolstrode tries to make up for what he did by giving Will his fortune, but Will won't take it. Will goes to see Dorothea again to say goodbye, and this time she understands that he loves her. This time, he really leaves Middlemarch. Lydgate now owes Ned Plymdale 1,000 pounds, so he tries to sell his house to him. Rosamond stops the sale in secret, though. Lydgate asks Bolstrode for money when he has no other choice. Bolstrode says no and tells Lydgate to file for bankruptcy. He also tells Lydgate to stop running the new hospital. Raffles comes back, but he looks very sick. Bolstrode takes him in and calls Lydgate, who tells him that Bolstrode is drunk and needs to go to the hospital. Bolstrode changes his mind and gives Lydgate the money he needs, 1,000 pounds. Raffles dies because Bolstrode didn't give the helper who was taking care of him the right directions for how to care for him. But Raffles had already told Bambridge, a local horse dealer, the secret story about Bolstrode's past, and the rumor spreads like wildfire through Middlemarch. People think that Bolstrode paid Lydgate to kill Raffles. Both of them are ruined by the scandal, and they have to get ready to leave Middlemarch and leave the new hospital behind. Dorothea says that she thinks Lydgate is innocent and tries to get him to stay, but Lydgate refuses. She also gives him a check for £1,000 so he doesn't have to pay Bolstrode anymore. Dorothea goes to the Lydgate's house and sees Will and Rosamond holding hands while Rosamond cries. She thinks this means Will and Rosamond are in love, but she is wrong. Later, Dorothea goes to see Rosamond, and Rosamond tells Dorothea that Will loves her and explains what went wrong. Will and Dorothea finally tell each other how they feel, but Will is still sure at first that they can't get married because of Kasabin's will. Dorothea tells him she will give up her wealth to marry him, even though most of her close friends and family are against the marriage. Bolstrode leaves Middlemarch after making a deal with Fred to give him his house. In finale, the storyteller tells what happens to each of the main actors after the main story ends. Fred and Mary get married, and their life together is happy and successful. Rosamond and Lydgate's marriage doesn't get better, and when Lydgate dies at age 50, he feels like a failure. Will has a flourishing political career in London, where he and his wife Dorothea make their home. Dorothea is a devoted wife and mother. About the author. George Eliot was born in Warwickshire, where her father ran a farm. She went to school for a long time for a girl at the time, but she only did so until she was 16. After this, she kept reading a lot, and you can see the effects in her writing, which is intellectually complex and full of references to a wide range of knowledge. She became friends with a group of agnostics and political rebels when she was a young woman. She started turning German theological books into English and putting out short reviews in magazines. She lived alone in Geneva for a while before going to London. There, she was the editor of a literary magazine called the Westminster Review, which was more liberal than most. In 1851, Eliot met George Henry Lewis. Lewis was in an open marriage, but he soon started dating Eliot. They went on a honeymoon to Germany and lived as husband and wife even though Lewis had never divorced his first wife. At the time, this arrangement caused a lot of trouble. Eliot wrote her first short story when she was 37 years old. Two years later, in 1859, she wrote her first book, Adam Bede. Between 1871 and 1872, Middlemarch was released in parts, and Eliot's last book, Daniel Deronda, came out in 1876. 
Lewis died in 1878, and then Elliot married John Walter Cross, who was 20 years younger than she was. This again caused a lot of trouble, since Cross was 20 years older than she was. Elliot died in 1880, the same year she got married. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.